Hi everyone, this is Tuplex. Welcome back to Felsbrunn. We're continuing our harvest of canola. Looks like we're about a third of the way done on this field. Um, I've just taken the first trailer load back to the farm to empty into the silo and, um, and emptied out a little bit of what was remaining in the harvester. Uh, I'm gonna come down here to the end of the field and wait for it to turn around and then we'll empty it again before we move on to other exciting activities. So the next thing that we're gonna have to do on this field is um, spread some lime. Now, in the last episode, um, I was wondering whether there was any price advantage to buying lime in bulk at the lime station versus buy it, buying it in pallets at the store. And the answer is no. There's no difference in price. It's still $450 per, or 450 euro in this case, per 2,000 liters. Um, in either location, so um, I think you would just you would just want to buy it in whichever location is more convenient. You won't save anything by going to the lime station, um, which I think is a shame. I think it would make sense to get a better price by buying it in bulk like that in your own container, since uh, you know since they don't have to be put into pallets or anything by the seller, but. Uh, that's the way it is. So I did go and uh, fill it up completely. So I've got a full load of 14,000 liters in here, uh, but we're not gonna use that just yet. Um, I'm gonna wait until we're completely done harvesting because the spreader will move through the field fairly quickly. Uh, so I don't necessarily need to start on it right now, I'll just I'll probably just end up catching up to the harvester and having to stop and wait. So uh, we'll continue to work on field 20 in the meantime. Now one thing I want to do is I would like to check if I can add a fertilization layer at the same time that I'm adding the lime. So I'm just going to come over here and whoops. Hang on, fold it up. I have to load it first. Let's go put in the fertilizer. Uh, I think that's the container on the right side here. Yep. Okay. And I think this will be enough to do the whole field if it works. All right, so let's look at the field state here on the map. Okay, so this it's currently shows that we don't need anything on this field, right? Need lime has disappeared. So once the lime hits the ground um, and it turns white, then you're good to go. It, you don't need to plow it in or anything to make it take effect. Uh, let's see what happens if we spray. Yeah, okay, good. So we got our lime down. Now I'll spray the field to fertilize it, and then we'll go ahead and put down some seed. Let me get over just a little bit more. There we go. So while the harvester is running, we can continue to work over here. Uh, we will have to check on it from time to time to make sure it doesn't get full and stop again. Okay, and then lesson learned after last time. Let's put a little header row over here. Yep, 
Yeah, and I've been doing a little thinking um, since the last episode, or even towards the end of the last episode. Um, we do still have the ability to take out another $210,000 of a loan. My loan right now is two ninety, and I can take out a total of 500000 right now. Um, and I was thinking that it would, it would probably be a good idea to borrow all the money that I can and use that money to buy another field. Um, because you know, the, the additional loan will increase our interest payment by, I think about 1200 a day, 1200, I think is what we paid for yesterday with 250,000. But, but we'll be able to net a lot more than that with another field. So it seems like it would be a good investment to borrow the money to buy the field, get some additional income, um, and then we can start paying off all the loan and continue uh, upgrading our equipment to bigger, better, and faster stuff. And, um, you know, and then continue buying even more land or get into animals or something like that. So I think that's what I'm going to do. And I'm thinking the two, the two best choices right now would be this field right next to us, uh, field 19. Um, we could buy that and then we could probably even get a plow and merge it with this one. So we just have, you know, two fields effectively. Let's take a look at the map. So field 19, this would cost us 175,000. Actually field 18 would probably be a better, a better choice. And then there's field 11, which is 192. Uh, these other ones are all, I think, too expensive. And these are too small. I don't want to bother with those. 30 would be a possibility. Um, I'm not sure which is bigger, 11 or 18. You know, I mean, 19 is okay. <clears throat> because we can connect it with field 20, which would be pretty nice. And we could even expand field 20 with a plow, come up here and, and make a bigger field out of all this. Um, the problem with 19 is that you're, you're paying, you pay for all the land. So if you buy a large parcel of land with a small field, um, it's not as good of a purchase as getting a piece of land that is mostly filled by the field like you get in 18. And in 18, I think the field is a little bit bigger. Um, let's see if we can figure out how big those fields are. Um, 21. Did I look at 21? Yeah, how much was 21? No, that's, I can't afford 21. That's too much. I don't know any other way to see your field sizes besides trying to find a contract for that field. Okay, so I can't really tell. <clears throat> um, I mean, it, it looks to me like 11 and 18 are probably pretty close in size. 11 is taller, but it's narrower. Um, and both of those are definitely bigger than 19. But it would be nice to keep everything together. So maybe 11 would be the best choice. That way we've got three fields all next to each other. So let's, um, let me get this, uh, let me get this tractor going on seeding the field. And then we'll look into taking out a loan or increasing the loan, I should say. Okay, so now we're gonna get to try out our brand new seeder and we need to decide what to plant. So I've put in
I put in wheat the last time. Um, let's see. We got barley, canola, oats, soybeans. Let's do let's do barley this time. Oh, you know what? The other thing that makes this a, an easier choice on which field to buy is field 11 is ready to harvest. In fact, it's ready to harvest now. Um, if we don't do it soon, it's going to wither. And that's got wheat. Yeah, so let's buy field 11. All right, so I'm going to max out my loan. And I think that'll give us enough to buy it. Yeah, so I'm at 500 now. Let's buy field 11. Okay, and then I'll pay back <laughs> 10,000 of it. All right, so we've got a cushion of $10,000. And yeah, harvester needs to be emptied, of course. Uh, crud. The pipe's always on the wrong side when this happens. <laughs> At least it seems that way. All right, so I'm gonna have to turn off the worker. And then I'll just back this up and drive it over to the trailer. So as soon as we finish harvesting this field, we'll start harvesting wheat on the next one. And that'll give us a lot more money. Um, it'll help get an immediate offset to the cost of the additional field. Hopefully it's fertilized and free of weeds, although I think I can spot a few weeds in there from here. I could be wrong. Let's see, what's the state of that field? No, it needs to be weeded. Okay, so it's got weeds, but um, hopefully we'll still get a good amount of crop out of it. Looks like it wasn't fertilized either, so it won't be a huge harvest, but It'll be something better than buying an empty field. All right, and then we're also gonna have all this canola to sell and the wheat that we harvested off the other field. So we'll be able to, we'll be able to get back maybe even, maybe up to half of what we just spent on that field. Okay, and this guy needs to be emptied, so let's go do that. And then once these tasks are all complete, we'll start seeding, whoops, we'll start seeding the other field. Should probably have the cover on it, so those little canola seeds don't start blowing away in the wind. Yeah, I can see all the weeds in there. It's pretty bad. Apparently the previous owner didn't have time or the inclination to take good care of his field. And um, I'm kind of curious about when weeds grow. Um, because in our, in our case, we planted seed, and then we got the first growth stage. There were no weeds, and then we got weeds in the next growth stage. So I'm, I'm guessing that the weeds appear, how should I say it? The weeds appear like one growth phase after you stop working the field. So in other words, I think I think that if you let the field sit idle for one growth phase, then the weeds will sprout. And it seems like the weeds go through two or three growth phases themselves before they become fully grown. So 
So that means that if I seed field 20 again now, then I would expect the weeds to pop up in growth phase two like they did the last time. Whereas if we were wait if we were to wait until another growth phase passes before I put the seed down, well, no, then it would still be the same. Yeah, so I don't know. I don't know how to get them to. If the weeds are going to show up, I'd rather have them show up in the first growth phase so that I can use a weeder on them instead of having to spend money on herbicide. But um, I haven't quite gotten the the schedule figured out yet. Okay, let's try out our new equipment. Unfold it. Yeah, let's uh, let's start down here and make a header. I should try not to drive on my neighbor's field. Okay, turn it on. And lower it. Yeah, and six meters gets you a nice wide pass. All right, let's see if I can get this to turn 90 degrees for me. Pretty close. This was my favorite seeder in FS15. This is one that I used all the time. Um, back then, they didn't have any seeders that would also fertilize, so that was not an issue. And they only had one stage of fertilization as well, so it was uh, you didn't have to worry so much about those things as we do now. So I use this most of the time. You know, it's not the uh, it's not the biggest seeder there is, obviously. But uh, it was also less expensive then. I think it was about fifty grand. And in seventeen too, I think it was about fifty grand. So it's more expensive now. But the nice thing about it is it's fairly wide. Um, it'll do direct seeding, so you don't have to cultivate if you don't want to. And it doesn't require a really big tractor to pull it. And if you do have a big tractor to pull it, it just, you know, it's just really easy to move around because it's, it's not too heavy. So I would use it even a lot of times with with a fairly large tractor just because it was easy to handle and, and I could get the fields done pretty fast. You know, and the difference between three meters and six meters is a hundred percent, but the difference between this one and a nine meter seeder is, is only 50%. So it's, uh, it's a big upgrade when you can get to it from the smaller ones. I don't know if that makes any sense, but <laughs> anyway, I like the cedar is what I'm saying. Uh, yeah, that wasn't really even close to the middle, was it? Yeah, and I'm happy to see that uh, that these tractors I chose seem to have more than enough power to handle this. At least on flat ground. Over on the other field it might be more difficult because there's some some slope to it. I hope I can get to that field before it withers. I, I think I think it's in the final harvestable stage, so if uh, if another growth growth phase passes before we get to it, then we're going to lose the crop. And 
And I also don't want any growth phases to take place while I'm seeding because I would like to have all my fields in sync. So one, one thing we could do to alleviate all of these concerns would be to turn plant growth off altogether until we're done doing what we want to do and then turn it back on. And, and that's the reason that I generally like to play with slow crop growth because like I really hate it when, for example, if you're in the middle of seeding a field and then one of the growth phases hit, then you'll have half of your field will start to grow and the other half is still just seeded. And then, you know, ultimately half of your field will be ready to harvest and the other half not. <clears throat> so I would almost prefer just to have the growth hit at midnight every day or, or something like that so that you could just do all your work during the day and then wake up in the morning and, and see the next phase. You know what I mean? So let me finish this row here and then I think I'll just turn growth off. I just have to remember to turn it back on again. Otherwise we might be sitting here for a couple of days wondering why nothing's growing. Yeah, I think this is not going to be quite wide enough to get that last bit at the end. Yeah, just barely. There we go. Yeah, that's in that's definitely in the last growth phase. So let's just turn it off so we don't lose it. Trying to see how my harvester is doing. I think it's probably needs to be emptied by now. Yep. We'll make a good progress on this one. Should be done fairly soon. And then we'll have to decide what to plant on this field. All right, I've got wheat, I've got barley, Canola. Let's do soybeans. And I think I think I'm going to use some of the money from this crop to buy a bigger tipper. At least twice as big as this one. Nope. There we go. Ah. <laughs> All right. Turn it on. Let's lower it this time. There we go. I wonder how long it's going to take before I stop detaching things by mistake. Lifted it up just a hair too soon.
Yeah, so, you know, why don't we do... Hmm. I'm trying to think what to do on on field 11. All right, I'm doing barley here. I could do barley on that field as well. I think I'd like to just do two crops between the three fields. Yeah, why don't I'll do barley on that one as well, and then we'll do soybeans on 13. And we're done. Okay, so once this um, once this goes into the first growth stage, uh, we'll need to spray it again with fertilizer. And I'll put this away for now. Get over there. I was expecting that to turn a little more aggressively. And we still have plenty of seed. I don't know if I've got enough for the other two fields, but probably at least one of them. Okay. All right. Harvester is still good, but I'm going to go park at the end of the next row. So hopefully we can do an auto unload. Yeah, I really miss the, the glance mod that Let's you see what your what the status of your other machines are while you're working. Um, what do we want to do here? Yeah, I need to get I need to start spreading lime over there, and it's going to be interesting to see. Oh, I can kind of see in my mirror. Let's see if I can hook it up this way. Oh, what happened? Nope. Okay. And I think we're safe to start to start spreading the lime at the top half of the field there. One thing that's cool is when this thing is full of lime, you can definitely you can definitely feel the weight in the way that the tractor drives. Like it you can feel a difference in the acceleration. And I think I'm well, I don't know if I should use a worker for this or not. Because this is a long field, and I know that I'm not going to be able to drive very straight for very long. Alright, so let's open up the spreader. Hopefully the harvester will get to my tipper before it gets full. All right, I'm just gonna put it on a worker. Go. Yeah, I could have gone over a little bit farther, but that's okay. Yeah, so. Look how fast the lime depletes itself. <clears throat> that's a thousand gone already. <laughs> it's probably gonna, yeah, I, I think we're gonna have to make many trips to refill this thing. 
before we get this field done. Probably at least two or three times. I wish it was easier to buy multiple pallets so that I didn't have to click like three times for every single pallet that I want to buy. That's going to be tedious. Oh, okay, good. It worked. I think we're ready to empty this out again. Because there's not enough space to take to take another full load. We're getting quite a lot off of this field. I'm pretty impressed. And there's still quite a bit left of it. So I think we're going to get a, a nice chunk of money from this. One thing I'm curious about is whether it would be a good idea for us to have hired workers do contracts for us while we're working in our own field. Because I think if you, I think if you pick the right contracts, you can find some that will still make you a little bit of money, even if you lease the equipment and use the hired worker. You know, like the stuff that you can do quickly, like the fertilizer contracts. And so I'm thinking about um, just accepting a contract, lease the equipment, and then just take the equipment to the field and get a hired worker to work on it, and then continue to do whatever we're doing and uh, use that as a way to make some extra money as kind of a background task. I think maybe I'll try that during the break and uh, see what I get, see what I end up with. You know, if I can do that and make two or three thousand dollars every time, then it's probably worth doing on a regular basis while we're doing the work on our own fields. And we'll empty this out again so that he can keep moving for a while. And we'll see how far that machine gets with the lime. So what I'll do now between or between now and the next episode is um, I'll finish harvesting this field. I'll finish spreading the lime on the field. Let's see how much lime we've got left. It's got to be... Oh, it's actually... All right, that's not... Yeah, I'll probably still need to fill it up at least once, if not twice, before we finish the field. But it, I guess it's getting farther than it first looked like. So I'll finish uh, putting down the lime, harvesting this field, and then in the next episode we can sell the canola... Uh, start harvesting this wheat and um, hopefully upgrade to a better, a bigger tipper. And uh, we'll take it from there. So thanks again for watching, everybody. See you next time. Bye-bye.